new extensional device that I hope you'll find helpful. One of the extensional devices Korzybski introduced to assist us in not identifying things that aren't so, or in, in keeping our identifications and non-identifications straight uh, was the hyphen between two parts of a compound word to bridge the separateness and indicate that um, what the two parts represent is complexities of the world. Um, so here are some of what Korzybski had to say about um, uses of the hyphen, that in space-time it revolutionized physics, in psycho hyphen biological, it marks the difference between animals and humans. In psycho-somatic, it's begun transforming medical practice and understanding. In socio-cultural, it indicates the need for a new applied anthropology. In neuro-linguistic and neuro-semantic, it emphasizes that we're dealing not just with the verbalism, but with living human reactions. Uh, I come from a background of applied mathematics and doing 40 years of database design where we make use of functional composition and decomposition. And it struck me that some of the uses of hyphen, hyphenated terms in general semantics might better be thought of with the term compose or composition between the hyphenated words. So you could read that as G with a little circle followed by F. You could read it as G circle F or G round F or G composed with F. So in using a circle to represent composition in a term that had previously been hyphenated, we would have, instead of space hyphen time, we would have space is composed with time. So we're indicating that there's multiple dimensions of one existing something rather than dichotomized terms. And the current understanding in physics says that there are at least 11 physical dimensions. So I'm representing those by D1 composed with D2 composed with D3 through to D11. Because I think that better represents the complexity of it than just saying there are 11 dimensions. Also, we have term pairs that are used with multiple contexts that represent some kind of a continuum. And I believe that using the composition symbol is a better representation of that. So hot, cold, in some context you're talking about temperature, so I put temp to represent measure of what are we measuring with a continuum that 
hot and cold compose. It could also be attraction that hot and cold compose. Uh, in some of the statistical geo, sorry, my words aren't coming out very fluently after though my plane ride. Um, in GIS systems, they have what are called heat maps where color coding is used to indicate ranges of frequencies in particular geographical areas. Um, and that's yet another meaning of hot composes with cold, where there it's meaning ranges of counts. Um, and that's all. <laughs> Hope you find it useful.